Just how good is the new iPhone camera? Should I use it more? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny and today we're gonna be diving into a topic that is really, really interesting. And that's whether or not the new iPhone XS Max can finally replace this big bulky DSLR camera that I carry around everywhere that I go. But right now it's 8.30 a.m. So we're gonna go grab some coffee and then we're gonna dive in deep into this topic. Let's go. All right, now we got the coffee in hand and we're ready to take a deep look at what this camera is truly capable of and if it's ready to replace this DSLR camera that I own. Now the problem with traditional DSLR cameras is that they are big, bulky. You have to carry around a ton of different lenses to capture all of the shots that you may potentially want to grab. But with this, it's all built in. It's all with something that you're already carrying around with you and it might honestly be better. So let's take a look. The iPhone XS Max has a dual rear facing 12 megapixel camera. This has come a long, long way from the original iPhone's two megapixel camera that was thought to be revolutionary at the time. Now, this 12 megapixel camera is not your typical run of the line camera. Because it's dual, it has a lot of different functions such as portrait mode, or 3D imaging if you're using outside software such as Facebook, which is a really cool touch. With these dual cameras, you have a 24 millimeter that's at a 1.8 aperture, which is fan-freaking-tastic because now you can get those shallow depth of field shots that you haven't been traditionally able to get and you can also shoot in low light. Now, the other camera on the back side is considered the telephoto lens. This is approximately a 50 to 55 millimeter lens at a 2.4 aperture, which again is great for a 50-ish millimeter lens. Now, you also have to take into consideration that it's not just about the aperture, it's about the sensor size. Now, on this bad boy, the sensor is not that Big. The sensor size on this thing is 1.4 nanometers. Not millimeters, not centimeters, nanometers, which is insanely tiny. Honestly, for that size, I'm very impressed with this camera and that it can actually do so well in low light situations. Now the sensor size on my DSLR, that is about 22 millimeters, which is a lot bigger than this guy and it really shows in low light situations. So for this video to test out the two different cameras, I'm gonna be taking photos at the same focal length, the same aperture, and getting exactly the same framing composition and stack them side by side. Then we're gonna call Ashley over and have her look at each photo and see what she thinks. And then we're gonna determine whether she thinks the iPhone looks better or whether the Canon looks better. Hopefully, hopefully she says the Canon because I have invested a lot of money into this camera. And if she says that this looks better, well, I just wasted, you know, couple grand I guess but we shall see before we dive into this deep comment below whether you think the Canon DSLR camera will perform better than the iPhone XS Max or if you think the iPhone will do better stacked up against the DSLR I'm curious what you guys think or whether you use the iPhone as your typical running gun for photography or do you carry around a DSLR? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious what y'all think. Anyways, we are gonna go out and shoot these shots. I'm pretty excited about this. Let's go. I came out here on this super overcast gloomy day to test out the iPhone XS Max versus my DSLR camera. I'm about to set up the camera and get all the focal lengths, the framing, and the aperture all lined up perfectly so that we can truly test which one looks better. I honestly am betting my money on the DSLR just because of the sensor size. <laughs> Did y'all hear that duck? Holy nuggets. Homeboy is loud. I'm stacking my cards on the DSLR because of the sensor size. It's going to allow a lot more light, a lot more color, and for the image to just really get captured well, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, we are about to get this underway. I am super pumped for this test. I've been wanting to do it for some time. Let's do it.
So first we're gonna be testing the 24 millimeter lens that is built in on the iPhone XS Max compared to what would be the 24 equivalent on the DSLR. Now we're gonna put these side by side, frame them up and shoot these shots. Let's do this. So on the iPhone, you can set what is the grid. So you can really frame the shots up correctly to be equivalent to the DSLR. So that's exactly what we're gonna do to make sure that these pictures are lined up correctly. So the first shot I'm just gonna take is straight down this bridge. We're gonna see how the depth of field, the colors and everything come out. Stock on both. So that was the first shot at the 24 millimeter. Now we're gonna switch it over to what would be the 50 millimeter on the iPhone and the DSLR and really test out what this telephoto is like. I think that the 24 millimeter on the iPhone will be better than the 50 millimeter. So for this next shot, we're gonna be shooting across the water over at that greenery on the other side because it is a telephoto lens. We're gonna be able to get things that are more in the distance. So let's try this out. All right, so we got that, check. All right, so now we've taken two different shots, one down the bridge, one of that tree, and we're gonna do a portrait now. So we're really gonna test out the capabilities of both the iPhone and this lens. Now this is the kit lens that comes with the camera. This is what most beginner photographers use on their camera. Now I'm using this because I shoot with a lot of prime lenses and I can't get the exact focal length that my phone could get. So I'm using this kit lens and honestly, I don't like it that much. But this is more of a real world test for beginner photographers that might even be considering using their phone. So again, we're gonna test this out on some portraits right now. Okay, so we just got all of the shots taken on the camera and on the iPhone and we're gonna head back to my house now. Drop them side by side and see if Ash can tell a difference. Let's freaking do this. All right, so we just got back to my house. I imported the photos onto my computer. We are about to see the final results. I'm gonna put them side by side. Ash is gonna take a look and tell me which one she thinks is better. Now only I know which one is the iPhone and which one is the DSLR. And uh, we're gonna see if she can spot the differences. So here we go. So this is the actual portrait shots pulled up side by side. Um, Ash, tell me what you're thinking right now. Um, they look pretty similar. I'm gonna say that this one is the iPhone picture. If you showed me one of these, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I think that this one is the iPhone picture mainly because there's some inconsistent blurring on the side, which is something I notice in portrait mode. Um, it looks kind of fake. There's like parts that are blurred and parts that aren't. I don't know what the deal is. So that's why I think this one's a DSLR, just because it's a little softer and you can see how my hand is in focus, but my face isn't as much. All right, show me the next one. Okay, so right here is the shot of the bridge. They are placed side by side. Tell me what you think, Ash. Definitely iPhone. iPhone sharpens everything so ridiculously. It's pretty obvious that that's iPhone. And I can see a lot more depth of field in this picture. Was I right? That is correct. Ha. Huh. Good job. All right, now on to the next one. Okay, right here is the shot across the water over at that tree with the greenery. Ash, tell me what you think about this one. I think this is personally gonna be the hardest to decipher which is which. Yeah, this is pretty difficult. They honestly look really similar. Shoot, I feel like I might get this one wrong, but I don't know. Okay, I'm, this one's really hard. I feel like I wanna say this is the iPhone photo, mainly because you can see all this one, it's really sharp all the way through like this whole section of the photo but in this one you can see how like this i don't know what that is trash a duck i don't know it's a little bit blurred and then it comes into focus over here so that's just a characteristic of iphone that i personally notice is that everything is really like crisp and clear and everything is in focus compared to this one is that right that is also correct yeah tell me if you had the option to get a photo taken which would you rather have and why i mean i wouldn't like post this photo like we didn't go out and try to do like a shoot like a photo shoot shoot you know this one's slightly more appealing just because it not everything is so like harsh and sharp 
compared to this one so i personally like how the water looks a little smoother like it should back here it looks pretty similar i can't really say that there's much difference between those like it basically captured i guess what you would say the subject was about the same at that focal length so i i honestly i still prefer dslr but iphone is really getting up there. They're catching up real quick, honestly. So there you guys have it, the official results. It's kind of hard to tell. The iPhone does make the images a little bit more crisp and clean, but the DSLR does a great job at getting better depth of field and just making sure that your subject is in perfect focus. Now the iPhone in portrait mode tries to recreate that digitally and with the software and technology that they have, but it's not true depth of field. It's more artificial, like I said, and I, you can tell for sure, and especially in low light situations, it just does not work well. But yes, Apple has a great potential on the road that they're going with their cameras. Honestly, I think in the next couple versions of the iPhone camera, it's gonna outdo the DSLR, especially if they get better at their focal lengths, at their aperture, and with their portrait mode. Now, if they can really truly make a good depth of field camera with the 1.8 aperture, it is gonna be phenomenal. In the meantime, I'm absolutely gonna keep using my DSLR. It just takes better all around photos in my personal opinion and in post I have more control over the colors because I can shoot in raw on this and not in the iPhone. Plus this is better for video which is what I'm doing right now. Anyways guys that is going to conclude today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about my iPhone camera or about my DSLR just let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to answer it. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video and cue that outro. Peace.